Good morning. Welcome to the Small Business Webinar Series. Today is May 5th, and we're hosting Bibliotech uh, Public Library Small Resor Business Resources with Laura Cole. Uh, I want to introduce you to our staff before we get started for the Small Business Department. So there's a slide, and you can see who our team members are. Uh, James Massey and Stephen Prado on our team will be facilitating the information this morning, the call. And then we also have Brenda Rodriguez, Amparo Arriago, and Sonia uh, Delgado on our team. Um, all the information and, and everything that we do every day is coordinated by these outstanding team of individuals. And we welcome your comments and feedbacks at any time. So we're ready to get the webinar started uh, for the Small Business Series. I'm going to go back to the slide with Ms. Cole. So I can tell you a little bit about her. She is a dynamic leader here at Bear County. Uh, when Judge Wolf decided, uh, and I guess he probably recruited her and figured out how to make her get this off the ground. But I do remember when we had this excellent idea of the all digital library uh, and Laura uh, led that effort and she continues to serve on our, all of our branches as we grow the, uh, the uh, digital library in, in Bear County. Uh, she has served as a leader around the world, uh, it's my understanding, individuals come in and look at what her and her team does at Bear County. We approached her with our partnership with Small Business uh, several uh, months back, and we now have a dynamic site, and they're going to show you how to find resources for your small business and other resources that you can use at Bibliotech uh, throughout the system. So with that, Laura, we're going to turn it over to you, and we really appreciate you taking the time to join us this morning. Thank you. Thanks very, very much, Renee. I am very happy to be able to be here to share Bibliotech with you today. And I also want to thank Renee and her great team at the Small Business and Entrepreneurship Department of Bear County. So I, um, I have a couple of goals for you today I, uh, for this webinar. I'd like for you, first of all, to come away with an understanding really of Bibliotech in itself as sort of a, a small business startup and sort of look at that as uh, maybe a model of, of ways that you can look at your own business and also then to be very, very offer you very, very specific tools um, that we can offer you for your own businesses. Um, next slide, please, James. I'm joined today um, by, as, as Renee said, I'm the director of Bibliotech. I am joined today by Elizabeth MacArthur who is our Digital Equity and Strategic Technologies Librarian. She joined Bibliotech in January of 2017, and uh, she is just a phenomenal team player and um, asset to our department, so we are very, very happy to have her. Next slide, please. As Renee said, um, I wanna tell you a little bit about how Bibliotech came to be. Um, in 2012, Judge Wolf, Judge Nelson Wolf, um, got an idea. He had been reading um, uh, Isaacson's biography of, of Steve Jobs, and he was really struck by the development of technology in a very short period of time. You know, the iPhone had just come out in 2007, so in five years, um, the way technology just sort of became accessible to everybody and really revolutionized the way that we conduct our lives had changed so dramatically in five years time. Now to give you a little bit of background, uh, Bear County has had an interlocal agreement with the city of San Antonio since I think 1934, maybe 38, um, for the provision of library services for anyone living outside of the city of San Antonio. So that means anybody living in the suburban cities, anybody living in the unincorporated areas has access to free access to the San Antonio Public Library uh, because of an annual contribution that Bear County makes to that fund. That's been a wonderful service and we are very, very happy to be able to provide that. Judge Wolf, for many of you who don't know him, is a bibliophile. He is a collector of books. He is an author, he, um, he loves books and he loves libraries. When he was the mayor of the city of San Antonio, he helped to build the central library downtown. He and his wife raised the money for it and they launched it. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful um, 
um, asset to the city of San Antonio. So he loves libraries and he's a, a real staunch um, supporter. But what he, what we came to realize in Bear County is that the population is growing on the outskirts of the county. So on that perimeter, people are moving farther and farther away from the city. You know, they, they want those city-like services, but they don't want to pay the city taxes involved. So people are moving farther to the perimeter of the county. And what that means for us is those people for whom we are spending that annual contribution are getting too far away from branch libraries in order to use them. So, um, and the city can only build branch libraries within the city limits. In short, our dollars weren't stretching as far as they once were. Again, uh, Judge Wolf is a tremendous reader. Uh, he's a researcher. He's just interested in, in all kinds of things. And he thought, you know, what would it be like uh, if we were to do an all digital library? And he had read about some efforts that had already gone on in the country. You know, there was, I think, Newport Beach um, that had actually had plans to create an all digital branch of one of their libraries that stalled because people were not ready for it. Now, mind you, this was probably around 2010. It's a different world. You know, we're, this is 10 years ago. Think about what's happened in the past 10 years. And there were some other efforts around the country that either never got off the ground or they started and they were rejected. Uh, people just weren't prepared for them. But he thought, you know, if we're going to provide a library solution, looking to the future rather than looking behind us, um, how would we do that? What makes sense? You know, and what makes sense in terms of physical distance? Um, if we can't, you know, if we can't reach, we can't possibly build enough libraries to reach all those people as they, as they get farther and farther away. Well, the, the logical um, thing is to build a library in the cloud where people aren't defined by access by their physical distance. So he, I was part of a group of people. He started this conversation. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure um, what, what the expectation was and how things were going to come, but I, was, I happened to be involved with a group of, of county leaders and we would gather weekly to talk about um, what that might look like. And I always tell my staff and, and everybody else that I talk, every, anybody that I have the opportunity to talk to about Bibliotech, is it was a fascinating uh, thing to be part of those discussions. Because we were doing, we were, we were talking about doing something that had never, ever been done before. And I think it's really important for you as small business owners and entrepreneurs to think about this. Because when we would have these discussions, Nothing, no idea ever got shut down. You know, we would sit and say, well, how could we operate this? And, and somebody would throw out an idea and somebody else would throw something else out. But nobody ever was shut down at that table. All ideas were entertained. And that's important because I think when you're talking about a harebrained idea that just might work, you need to be open to possibilities. And, uh, I think that if we had had the wrong group of people around that table, Bibliotech never would have come to be. You know, some ideas, I don't think there was a single idea that was summarily rejected. Some ideas were refined. You know, people would say, well, maybe it would work better if, but it was never, everyone felt free to contribute um, and everyone felt free to sort of think outside. And so, uh, after weeks and weeks and weeks of that, um, because uh, there was no model for us to go on, um, we came up with what we thought would be a good working model for Bibliotech. You know, taking ideas from, you know, part, bits and pieces from this model, bits and pieces from this model, let's put them all together and we think we can make this work. <clears throat> so it was, uh, it was probably um, 11 months from concept to launch. And from those discussions in 2012, um, we opened our doors in 2013. It was surprisingly inexpensive in terms of a library to start it up. Uh, we found that we had um, a, a space in a county building, so 20, um, 
4,800 square feet of space that was unfinished. So we didn't have to pay for a space. Fortuitously, it was also happened to be located in an area of the city that was financially challenged where people weren't going to have access to, um, to maybe technology or even a broadband connection. Um, when we opened our doors, that part of town that Bibliotech South is located in, it was estimated that up to 75% of homes in that area, now this is you know seven years ago, eight years ago, did not have access to a broadband connection. So we found savings in capital projects uh, other capital projects in the county, and we received some private donations because people really got excited about the concept. And at a cost of about $2.2 million to start up, we began our library. Next slide, please, James. So we knew from the outset that we were going to have to have a clear mission that we could communicate. Why are we doing this? What is the point of this? And, and it was very clear to us the idea of Bibliotech is to provide all Bear County residents technology access to enhance literacy, promote reading as recreation, and equip residents of our community with necessary tools to thrive as citizens of the 21st century. Um, a digital library, an all digital library, isn't gonna be of any value to anybody if they can't access it. Um, we knew that, you know, people, first of all, people were going to need to learn how to use it. They were going to have to have the equipment to access it. And they were going to have to um, have content and resources that made it of value to them personally. You have to be able to see yourself in the picture. So those were the three issues that we wanted to address. And knowing that San Antonio and Bear County face a tremendous digital divide. It was a matter of urgency to do this. We knew that we had to do it. Um, it. It was important and we needed to do it right away. Next slide, please, James. Now, digital literacy um, is important to everybody. It is important to you as small business people. It's, it's important that you can function in this, in this environment. In, when we talk about libraries, in the past we've talked about libraries having a goal of literacy, and that's very, very, very important. You know, but literacy isn't just about being able to read. Um, literacy, true literacy means that you have to have the skills to gain meaning, and you have to have skills to effectively communicate. It is the exact same in the digital space. Did, when we talk about digital literacy, it's more than knowing technology. You have to be able to locate information. You have to be able to organize it, synthesize it, understand it, evaluate it, and an analyze it. These are the digital, when we talk about digital literacy skills, this is, this is what you really need. And this is what Bibliotech seeks to provide for everybody. And if you don't have these skills, you are functionally illiterate. You know, in, in the past, we used to say, if you don't know how to read, you're illiterate. If you don't know how to use um, digital information, you are functionally illiterate in 2020. Uh, Judge Wolf often talks about the fact that when he was a kid, when he was growing up, any parent that really was concerned for their, their child's education would move heaven and earth and spend whatever resources they had to make sure that they had um, a set of encyclopedias in their home. Well, Translate that now to 2020. You know, if you if you really need education, you're going to make sure that you you acquire that in the digital space. Next slide, please. So when we talk about access, we mean access for everybody. Um, so Bibliotech is going to offer a digital alternative to traditional public libraries, and instead of going to the library. Your library is accessible wherever you are. There are no physical barriers to access and Bibliotech makes sure also that there are no financial barriers to access. Uh, we have three branches at which we circulate devices, we circulate tablets, we make technology and Wi-Fi and public computing, computing available to you. 
we also allow you to take that those those things home so that you can have access in your home we make it easy and affordable we offer classes for people to learn that are free of charge and we um, we offer a, a wide range of services to to assist you as you move into this realm next slide please so people will often oftentimes say well if you've got an all digital public library why do you need branches well it, <laughs> it's an interesting thing you know this pandemic has highlighted the need for both of those things especially in our in our neighborhoods um, obviously a digital library is the ideal solution during a time when people can't leave their homes you know for those people that have access to technology for those people that have devices you don't need to leave your homes to take advantage of absolutely every resource that we have um, i can't think of an easier a better solution for a library right now uh, in than an all digital library we don't have to worry about circulating paper we don't have to worry about um, those hazards and those vulnerabilities that come with those things you know you can you can access everything we have from the comfort of your own home in times that aren't times of a pandemic um, it's also really valuable just for pay, people that have disabilities who can't leave their homes people who are physically distanced from from libraries for senior citizens it's it's much easier for senior citizens to carry around a tablet than it is for them to manage um, you know heavy books also you know when you do digital reading you can alter the font size so it's easier for people with um, visual impairments uh, digital libraries are also also extremely advantageous for people in low income communities because it's far cheaper to be able to provide a library in the low income community when when resources are scarce we can also reach the incarcerated people who uh, don't have the opportunity to get out <laughs> physically get out um, to to reach libraries now on the other hand bricks and mortar libraries buildings are more than just book repositories you know we oftentimes talk about the library as the third place it's not home it's not work but it's a place where people can gather in sort of an edifying environment there are places where we can learn together they're their community gathering spaces and they provide a perfect opportunity as a distribution site this is where we can you know distribute devices for you we can you can come and pick up your your wi-fi hotspot you can use our computers um, what we're learning now during the pandemic we had to shut our branches down um, we shut our branches down on the 16th of march and what we started to hear from people is i I can't teach my kid. I, I mean, you know, my student needs to learn from home and they don't have, we don't have access to a computer. We don't have access to the internet. Um, I'm trying to fill out my tram, uh, my temporary rental assistance form. I don't have access to a computer. I can't function. I can't do these things. I don't have the resources. And so we wanted to get back up and running as soon as possible um, because we were hearing these things and we knew that these were services that critical services that we can provide, especially in our neighborhoods. Our neighborhoods are intentionally located, as I mentioned, in those challenged areas. People just don't have the resources. So it's very, very important to be able to provide these services. And bibliotech branches, although small, provide all of those things. Next slide, please. You know, we we talk a lot about um, how libraries prove their worth in their communities how do libraries show their value and and there have been traditional ways of doing that in the past people often talk they measure things you know how many books did we check out how many interlibrary loans do we have how many um how many people came through our door how many computer sessions did we have uh, how many kids attended our story time we measure all those things too they're important but I think that what has been most telling about the bibliotech and has been really the most um, the most revealing is that a digital library, you know, flips everything upside down. 
you know, you, people aren't coming to the library. The library is going to them. Uh, people aren't seeking out the library as a place. They are, they are experiencing the library in their environment. So what that prompts really is a shift in the way we have to look at our metrics. We have to look more about how are we transforming people's lives as opposed to um, what is it that they have, what kind of task they have completed. So we really try to look more at what is it, how is it that we are transforming as opposed to what is it that we did. So we're looking more at outcomes rather than outputs. And we're interested, very interested in those stories. How are people's lives being changed? How are we contributing? How are we reshaping our community? And uh, we are hearing those stories all the time. And I think that um, for you all, um, as small business owners, you can look to those same, same ways of thinking um, in terms of how is it that you're going to, how is it that you're going to be involved in Bear County? Uh, next slide, please. So as I mentioned before, uh, our library is um, comprised of three things, access, resources, and um, education. I've talked a little bit about the access and the education piece. I want to tell you a little bit now, and uh, Elizabeth is going to take over next, to talk about our resources. And these are the things that are directly meaningful to all of you. Uh, we have a, a variety of resources available for both um, entertainment and recreation, as well as business resources. We have Cloud Library, which is our main ebook resource, ebook provider. We have RB Digital, where you can find movies and music and magazines, and Lynda.com, which is an interactive learning program for, for um, a variety, a variety of, of learning. We have Mango Languages, where you can learn a foreign language. Hoopla, where you can download movies and music. Fold3 is is a, an ancestry source. Treehouse, where you can learn coding. Universal class, uh, again, a variety of skills, both business and personal skills. And BiblioBoard, which is a, a really kind of a unique platform. We provide simultaneous use material on this, on this platform, as well as an opportunity for people to create and to publish their own works on our live and share them in our library. We also have access to TechShare, which is the state library's uh, statewide resource um, portal. So those are, that's, that by no means is our complete list of resources. We have others available too, um, but that just sort of gives you an overview of the variety of resources we have available for you. So now, next slide please. We're gonna lead into a little bit about how you're going to find information that is specific to your interest on our website. If you go to our website and you go click on the About Us, you'll see a drop down under the news that will tell you, uh, you can learn all about starting a small business in Bear County. And there are links on this page that will take you to, um, to resources that are specifically of interest to you. So now I'm gonna have, turn it over to Elizabeth and she is going to do some demonstration of some of the, the resources that are available to you and how you can sign up for Bibliotech. Thank you, Laura. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so that we can look at that. Um, so this is that starting a small business in Bear County link that Laura just referenced. Um, it goes to some of our very specific um, resources that can help you all. Um, this is something that we update regularly with um, different webinars and new um, resources that we have. So the first step um, to using any of our resources is to visit our website, which is bearbibliotech.org and there's an orange register for bibliotech button. 
So because we're an all digital library, um, you do not need to come into one of our branches to register. You can register from wherever you are. It's a one page form that you just fill out. Um, you'll press this green button and then your library card number will be emailed to you immediately. And you'll have access to all of our resources as soon as you get that card number. Um, so some of the resources that are that Laura mentioned that are of interest to you all and that are mentioned in that article that we have up the web page are lynda.com, which um, some of you might know as LinkedIn Learning. So you can click right through to it. They have business training and tutorials, um, different learning paths, documentaries, weekly series, things that can help you um, with your business. And these are constantly being updated. It is literally millions of different classes. Um, so that's a great resource. We also have access to Universal Class, which Laura mentioned, which, um, sorry. Um, so we have access to Universal Class, which Laura mentioned. So once you, um, you'll register for that with your library card. And then once you sign in, there are all kinds of essential business courses everything from um, business management, business ethics, um, business writing. Um, so this again is thousands of courses that you can get certificates for um, that might be interesting for you all um, and your staff. As you can see, we do have many, many resources. Um, under this active learning platform, um, there's Mango Languages, which Laura referenced, that talks about the different language, um, different languages you can learn. Um, Treehouse is the coding, are the coding classes um, that she mentioned. And then she also talked about Cloud Library, which is our largest collection of eBooks and audiobooks, including business eBooks and audiobooks. Um, Another resource is Read It For Me. So this resource um, provides summaries of some of the best professional and personal development books. So it's actually a very popular resource with um, CEOs of major companies who want to be able to read books, but, um, but may not have the, the time to read the whole thing. So it has video summaries, audio summaries, and text summaries. Um, I'd also like to point out up here at the top, there is a, a button for our Bibliotech App Store. So once you have registered for Bibliotech with that link that I showed earlier, you can download all of these apps for free um, and access everything they include. So there is an app for, for instance, Linda, which we just talked about, um, also Cloud Library, Hoopla, which is more entertaining but very fun, the language learning app, um, Biblio board, which Laura mentioned. And then there's an RB digital app, which has um, some really neat content. Um, RB digital will allow bibliotech cardholders to access magazines, eBooks, audiobooks, And then we also have some educational courses on there. Um, if you're interested in music, we have music lessons. You can learn to play the guitar. But we also have the great courses, which are in-depth video lectures on all kinds of topics um, by some of the best professors and lecturers and experts on the different topics. So those might be of interest to you all as well. And you can access them from that app. Um, I think that is all the different things that Laura covered. and the, the um, resources that would be of most interest to you all. Um, we are always available to answer questions. So right now you'll see that our chat is offline, but you can still enter your information and we will get back to you um, within 24 hours. We also, now that our branches are open Monday through Friday, you can call our branches for assistance. Um, and we do have a contact us form right up here under about us. So we're always happy to answer questions, to assist with um, needs that you all might have that we can fulfill as your local public library. 
Ms. McArthur, this is James with the Bear County Swim Bee. I just want to point out the Linda training that Bibliotech offers. Um, it's phenomenal. Even if you are a government employee, I can say that our office, uh, each staff member has uh, personally done some training on Linda, and you'd be surprised what's in there. It, it gets into some very specific material for accounting, for, uh, of course, just office administration, time management, uh, personal improvement as a, as a professional employee. But um, you'd be surprised by just how much is uh, described in, in, in detail in that Linda training. Again, um, my office, SBD, the ones putting on this um, for you guys, and we thank Elizabeth MacArthur and Laura Cole so much for taking the time to join us and present this material to you. Uh, we ourselves are taking advantage of this, this training. Uh, also, I want to point out that Bibliotech has been an extremely strong partner of ours in bringing small business resources beyond Bibliotech, but any of the different uh, fields and capacities that uh, my office, SBD, tries to go into, we offer a number of on-site courses, uh, everything from starting up a business to specific programs like our African American Business uh, Enterprise Initiative. Uh, we mostly host them uh, on site at Bibliotech. Uh, before the uh, COVID pandemic, where we all ended up telecommuting and here we are on Zoom, uh, Bibliotech was actually one of the designated sites that we were trying to have community meetings at to bring folks in to talk about our disparity study. Uh, which is a, a separate topic, but uh, I just wanted to, to point out just the extreme partnership and the resources that it is that Bibliotech offers. Uh, not only to the community, but also for Bear County employees that we ourselves take advantage of. Um, so with that, I'll transition back to Ms. Cole. Uh, Lori, are you still on with us? I'm here. Okay. I'm here. Sorry, uh, I, I couldn't help but take the time to jump in there. We're, per no, we're yeah. personally and professionally benefiting from the services Bibliotech offers. That's fantastic. We are, we are, here, we are here to help. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, so were there additional slides on the presentation? I, I don't think we quite finished. No, that's it. That's everything. Okay, uh, so at this time, uh, let me remind everybody, if you're still here in the chat, uh, any questions that you have regarding Bibliotech or additional services that the county offers, any questions you might have for Laura Cole and for Ms. MacArthur, uh, go ahead and type them out in the chat. Make sure that somewhere in the chat room you've included your contact information. Uh, the presenters will be provided a transcript of everything that's said in that chat room for follow-up. So if there's anything at all that you ask uh, that we look into or we follow up with you for, uh, especially for Ms. Cole and, and Ms. MacArthur, who again, cannot thank you enough for being, with the, being here with us and uh, partnering to bring this to everybody. Uh, please provide it in the chat room so that we can follow up, provide that transcript to our presenters. Uh, Renee, do you have any closing comments you want to? Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Laura uh, and uh, Elizabeth for your uh, information this morning. One of the things I want to emphasize to the business owners and uh, those others that are on the call, because I see some uh, different uh, names that I recognize, that Bibliotech is very important to our community as we go forward, uh, not just today, but long term. Uh, as you're looking for those trainings, whether it's QuickBook training or the different types of support services, they do have those links in that Linda and, and different um, specialists in the office that can walk you through the site. So if you, can, if, you are on a, if you don't know how to do the research, uh, follow the links, uh, give someone at the branch a call or go by and visit, uh, and they will take the time to show you how to navigate the system and the site. Um, and they do a very good job of that with their team. Uh, and we appreciate that, especially all the stuff we do for small business. Because we know that the owners and operators of the business owners that we touch, uh, you wear all the hats in that business. So the more information we can put out to you, the better. So we really appreciate this. And uh, as we continue to grow uh, the bibliotech system, uh, we appreciate Laura and her team uh, and all the excellent work that they do. So with that, we'll close it out. Um, the chat room will be open for a few more minutes. We don't see any questions in it uh, other than uh, copies of the slides. The slides are already posted on our website uh, and you can get a copy of those. Uh, if you or your business would like to do a different type of webinar, uh, uh, different topic, uh, send us that information as well because uh, we are making all types of resources available. Thank you so much. Thank you, Renee. Th and thanks, James and Stephen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you all for being here. And uh, at, at the risk of my boss, Renee Watson, thinking I might be trying to jump ship here, I'm going to plug Bibliotech for a couple more reasons. 
Number one is if you have a small business, maybe you're working out of your home. Uh, we deal a lot in my office with S-Corps and sole proprietor. Um, maybe you don't have a space to meet. Uh, you don't want to bring folks to your home. There are a number of incubator spaces out there. Maybe you looked into having a, a spot available at, at Geekdom, for example. Uh, but Bibliotech actually has rooms that you can reserve for free. Uh, we've done it a number of times. If you want to have a, a meeting where you bring someone in, not to your home. Uh, again, we deal with a lot of small businesses, uh, and we can't speak uh, highly enough about Bibliotech. There are three uh, physical locations now with meeting spaces available for you if you need to hold a meeting. And that goes with all the online resources we've talked about here. Uh, as a, uh, you can see my picture on screen right now, uh, program compliance and reporting. A lot of the information that we source to do our outreach and our specific reporting for small business, for uh, small minority women, better known business. We get that from publicly available data. And Bibliotech is a strong resource partner of ours, uh, access to database. Uh, the same databases that we're accessing, they're available to the public, and Bibliotech can help you source out of that same material that we use. Um, so with that said, keep those things in mind, and can't stress enough, personal experience. The, uh, the Linda training that we, we touched over on this uh, presentation, it helps tremendously to round out your employees. If you're a small business owner and you're bringing in some, some trusted colleagues to help build up your business and you really need to work on professional acumen, those courses are there, of course, but then also some very technical training. I can't tell you how often we have individuals come to us for accounting assistance, uh, seeking out, picking out a contractor, for example, a contract provider who can provide accounting services. Uh, it, it only does so much good when you go out and hire a contractor if you don't speak that language. So while I'm not saying that the Linda training can you make you a CPA, there's enough in there that you can have an intelligible conversation with the individuals that you then bring on for specific services such as accounting. Um, and again, my office, we take the time to take these same trainings so that one, we're familiar with the course material ourselves and we better ourselves. But two, we want to make sure that what we're directing you as small business owners to is worth your time. And Linda training and the bibliotech resources that are offered on our website are extremely, extremely helpful and are worth your time. Cannot state enough. We're gonna leave this webinar open. Again, uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them in the chat. I will ask that if you want follow-up, we don't require that you provide an email upon entry. If you want follow-up, please make sure your contact information is included somewhere in the chat room. We did see a couple folks asking that we reach out personally to provide the slides, we will do so. We'll also be providing this webinar on our YouTube channel. We're going to post it on our website. And uh, again, a transcript of all questions asked will be provided to Ms. Cole and to Ms. MacArthur uh, after we close here. So we will be following up with everybody who asks questions or needs follow-up with their individual concerns. With that, I'll go ahead and uh, shush myself. I wasn't the one you guys came on to see. We appreciate everyone being here. Thank you so much to Laura Cole and to Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth MacArthur for taking the time to walk us through Bibliotech and its various resources. With that, um, let me just remind everyone that tomorrow we're hosting another webinar, same time, uh, 10 a.m. That's going to be all week. We're hosting a different webinar. Tomorrow's series is going to bring in the tax assessor collector, Albert Uresti. A number of folks, some of which I recognize uh, logging in here as we admit you guys and, and look at your names. Some of you have asked questions that we've had to direct to Mr. Resty's office. Uh, he will be here in real time, um, probably the same format where you'll place your questions in the chat room that we'll then follow up with. But the biggest thing is the COVID uh, preparations that the tax assessor collector himself has had to put in, uh, the response and what we can forecast in terms of next year's taxes. All these things have been brought up to our office and we've, um, you know, we've dispatched them as needed. But I just want to remind everybody that Mr. Uresti will be on with his staff tomorrow. Uh, there is a recording of this webinar that we're uh, actually taking right now. It's not going to be available in real time. We're going to clean it up, uh, probably take out some of my comments because, again, I'm not that important. You guys showed up to hear from Ms. Cole and from Ms. MacArthur. Uh, but each of our webinars are recorded. We're going to host them on our YouTube channel as well as on our website. As soon as we're done editing those, we're going to make them live for everybody. Um, with that said, a uh, quick reminder, uh, internal commercial again, Mr. Resty tomorrow at 10 a.m. talking taxes with the tax assessor collector. On Thursday, we're going to be hosting Charles Johnson, the executive director of the South Central Texas Regional Certification Agency. And then on Friday, 
If anybody on here has questions about business resources uh, from purchasing uh, in terms of how it is you go about registering with the supplier portal, uh, how it is you can go about looking for contract opportunities in Bear County, and then of course our internal system, the contract diversity management system, which you can use to find additional bid opportunities beyond Bear County. We're going to host that webinar on Friday at 10 a.m. with our new purchasing agent, Patricia Torres, and our supplier portal contact over Bear County Purchasing, Aaron Andrade. Uh, I did see one question come across from iPad 5. iPad 5, I can't see your name, otherwise I would call you out by name. Uh, there's a question of, is there a recording of this webinar, your YouTube channel? And it looks like Stephen Prado and our team already addressed that. Uh, so with that said, again, thank you everybody for joining. Even if you made it on late, we will be making this webinar available very, very soon. We're just going to clean up some of the pause points and we'll post this on our website as well as on our YouTube channel. Any questions and comments posed in the chat room will be provided to our uh, presenters and we will follow up with everybody who took the time to ask those questions or make those comments. So uh, with that said, you're going to hear some silence. The webinar is essentially over, but we're going to leave that chat room open for you guys. Uh, go ahead and type out any questions or comments that you have. We're going to have it over for a couple more minutes just so we can give everybody a chance to give us some feedback and ask some questions. So again, thank you so much to Renee, to Ms. Cole, to Ms. MacArthur for joining us this morning. Thank you all.